of the youngest, smallest, toughest, and most practical piece of mechanized equipment which has made its appearance in the present war. Assisted by the United States Quartermaster Corps, civilian engineers designed the jeep adopted by the United States Army, and it was quickly put into mass production by the great automobile industry of the United States. Within less than a year, the Jeep was in use on practically every United Nations war front, where it has won a place of highest honor, and it is one piece of warfare equipment which will be just as useful when the war is over. The great automotive industry of the United States has always led the rest of the world in mass production of fine quality products. Little wonder is it that the Jeep so quickly began to roll out in such vast numbers that the real facts would amaze the dictators. For every one of the United States peacetime plants have been converted to wartime work, most of them greatly enlarged, many new plants built, and all rolling 24 hours every day of the week. The Jeep weighs less than 2,000 pounds, has four wheels, four cylinders, is only 129 inches long, 36 inches high, 54 inches wide. But just wait until you see all that it can do. Although in many respects similar to the old fashioned jalopy, the Jeep is designed to take the toughest assignments of any military demand in any type of rough country, in the Arctic, the tropics, or the desert. Their oomph and maneuverability is gained from special mechanical features, extremely sturdy engines, selective four-wheel drive, hooked up to a powertrain that gives them six forward speeds and two reverse speeds. They can turn in a circle 30 feet in diameter are easily steered with one finger. Cruising speed is 35 miles per hour on rough cross-country travel. Getting stuck in a Jeep is virtually unknown. They can go through mud or soft sand that would stop a heavier car and is absolutely impassable to a motorcycle. They are so light that four men lift one over obstacles which are otherwise impassable, although these situations occur but very rarely. Bumps that tilt them a full 60 degrees sidewise will not turn them over. On steep hills, they're almost as good as goats, taking a 60-degree incline with ease. Even deep rivers can be crossed without a bridge by floating across the canvas top columns lashed around the bottom. cable stretched across the river will do the trick. Look out there. Well, anyhow, the jeep got across all right, and what's a little wedding to a fighting man? The jeep is built for active service, and in actual warfare, it best proves its merit. Whether it is to Africa, Alaska, India, or the Solomon, it's all the same to the jeep. They are unequal for reconnaissance and messenger service, serving equally well the infantry, cavalry, or artillery division. Rushing vital supplies to remote or advanced outposts is a part of its duty. 
Operating in the North African campaign, the mighty armored tank becomes far more effective as its cruising range is greatly extended by the jeep as a fast-moving supply tender. Whether it's gasoline, shells, food, water, or men, it's all in the day's work. As a Red Cross unit, it is almost indispensable. Its small size makes it difficult to be hit by enemy shell fire, and its high speed and ability to operate in difficult terrain permits it to render incomparable service. The Jeep is equally important in actual battle. With a 30 or 50 caliber machine gun, it becomes the most deadly fast-moving unit of destruction against ground troops or low-flying planes. It can pull an anti-tank gun with ease anywhere the old-time cavalry horse could go. And it will go places an army horse never thought of going. Yes, into the plane they go. The battlefront cannot change too quickly for the flying jeep. Yes, this war baby is at home, no matter where they send. Rambling along the roughest roads of Australia is just the same as the sandy wastes of Libya or the streets of Detroit. His snorts and snarls have resounded where the voice of white men was seldom heard before this war. Here he goes ramping through the picturesque jungles of a South Sea Island front, searching for Japs to chase clear back into the flaming crater of their pagan Mount Fujiyama. As a sort of holiday from their strategic and strenuous duties of combat and warfare, the Jeeps have carried the world's greatest leaders on diplomatic missions and tours of the But unlike most of the other mechanized equipment of warfare, the Jeep is not destined to the junk heap when the war is over. They have an equally important job waiting when they come home. proven that they can pull a plow or other farm equipment just as well as an anti-tank can, using little more than two gallons of gasoline per acre to do it. They're just as efficient in harvesting the crop. And when the crops are all in, they will haul it to market at the rate of 25 miles per gallon of gas or take the family to town to, to the movies or to church. Yes, the Jeep is one of the United States' most ingenious and practical contributions toward winning the war and aiding in the reconstruction period which will follow. Like the soldiers of all the United Nations who are now fighting democracy's battles on every faraway corner of the earth, they'll come rolling victoriously home together.